Why did you leave your home and walk so long on such a difficult uh, road? حصر الحجوم في المنطقة ودمر المنطقة نهاية اللي ما عاد الأرواح لا أي شيء لا من شيء اللي جنود الأرواح خارج نفوسهم بس. Who was doing the fighting and who was killing the people? ما أدري كل الناس عمر هو البشاكل وهو بقتل. But tell me, why is Omar al Bashir attacking and bombing your people? After all, he is the president of Sudan. قال ما أدري لون الأسود. ده صحيح مين إحنا ما نكون موجودين لأنه البلد حقنا نكون ما فيه عشان هو يجي هو فيه دارفور جبال النوبة النيل الأزرق ثلاثة مناطق بس في السودان عمر بشير داير ما يكون موجود واي طبعا ديل الناس البلد ذاته يعني لما نجي نجاوبك نقول ليه ده سيادة الوطن ذاته الناس البلد الناس السودان ذاته يا عمر الثلاثة مناطق I first went to the Nuba 10 years ago when I was head of the United Nations in Sudan. Returning now to the Nuba mountains in the middle of the rainy season, it's striking to see what three years of conflict have reduced this beautiful land to. What happened here? This is the fire bo bombing by one of Omar al Bashir. The mm, bombing. And now it's bad. It burned the house. I can only imagine what it must have been like with uh, this injury. And you can see it's completely fused this arm. Um, and uh, you can see the uh, way in which the muscles have been completely burnt off. So she's lucky actually that uh, this did not get infected and she did not uh, die. What you see here is uh, attack by Bashir's Antonovs on innocent civilians. So the people of uh, Nuba Mountains are paying the price of our inattention to the atrocities and genocide in Darfur 10 years ago. And this continues right now in 2014. She lost her uh, eyesight. How did that happen? <laughs> I'm a doctor. Can I look at your eyes? So look ahead. This uh, lady Amna from the Nuba Mountains became blind following a bombardment of her village. I think something can be done for these eyes if she had proper uh, health care. But that requires proper services for these refugees. And since you got here, what help have you received? What about these, these children? Do they go to school? جداً الأطفال بعد بعد مرات بينفلوا دون الواحد ما لقى الرش رشة كويس ما لقى الحجاز الهلو كويس بيقوم بيدخل السوق بيمشي بيسرق بيمشي بعمل يعني أنت بتقوم كل ما في مشاكل المدارس نحن طلبنا الناس يوم كل ما أنت تكون داير مدارس يقول لك مشي جوان طن عشان تاني نقوم نمشي نخلي البيت بدايز زي ذا ونمشي تاني ندوب يعني ندوب تاني من جديد ونبدأ نفتح من جديد المجتمع مقصود جدا لأننا نحن ما قارين الناس كيف ما مقصود إذا كان السلام وجدت نحن بكرة ذا نحن نقول نمشي نرجع إذا كان السلام بقى في جبال ما نكون قادين ما نقود ولا يومين So what are your main needs? What assistance do you want? هو دارين عشان زراع الزراع كويس ده حاجة محيمة عند الزراع والليرث اللي رقفوا دي Despite the obvious daily survival needs, the first priority of the Nubian people is a demand for education. That Bashir's genocidal intent of wiping away their culture, their language, their way of life cannot be allowed to succeed. Here I am on Jida airstrip as it is lengthened and widened. 
This is now the international humanitarian capital in relation to the Nuba Mountains. But the irony is that this is not yet benefiting the most recent arrivals from the bombings in only the last few months because the hundreds of refugees that you see here are not convenient for the rules and regulations of the UN and therefore they're not documented and they're not entitled to the assistance packages that they should be given under the Refugee Convention. Some 100,000 Nubun refugees have sought safety in neighboring South Sudan, but nearly a million are still there trying to survive against daily harassment by the Khartoum regime. For the last three years, negotiations have gone on with the Khartoum government about access into the Nuba Mountains for humanitarian assistance. But time and time again, Bashir has reneged on his promises. And thus it is now that the people there face a humanitarian crisis, a food security crisis, a health crisis. I traveled in the middle of the rainy season because I wanted to see the conditions under which people lived at this most difficult of times when the whole region is virtually isolated. It took us eight hours to travel a journey that would normally take two. At one moment, our road was also barred by a couple of anti-tank landmines, reminding me of what I had seen the previous year, which was whole piles of anti-personnel landmines and cluster bombs. The population around this area is roughly 15,000 that we, we serve and we run a, an outpatient clinic and then have an inpatient of about uh, 20 to 25 beds where we can admit patients and, and treat them for whatever diseases and problems they may have. Was the RDT positive for oh, this child? Oh, or the malaria test? No. No. Okay. no so we're, we are just treating for malaria in case that's what... Well, there, there are definitely many challenges, uh, many things that we have to deal with. Um, of course, besides the fact that uh, we regularly concerned about uh, bombings from uh, the planes above. The, Yes. <laughs> They dropped uh, four bombs uh, directly in line with the hospital, the first one being just outside the fence over there, uh, the second one right uh, landing right here, and then another one between the hospital and the water point just outside, and then the fourth one was just on the other side of the water point. So this was the angle of the of the plane. Well, who come as an whom are feeling? Okay, whom are feeling? Dama canab tatal musushwa, who are the musush of Tasha Bassassan. Bassassan of Hukuma, a Sudania, who assassin Mustahad of Moatinin. The new mountains today appear to have been forgotten. There are no quick fixes to this crisis. In my view, we need three things. 
Firstly, a comprehensive approach that connects all the problems of the Sudan region together and addresses them simultaneously. Second, efforts to help the Sudanese people build their own capacity and resilience to continue their struggle against injustice and genocide. And thirdly, redouble our efforts to get accountability through international processes such as the International Criminal Court. I came away from the Nuba Mountains disturbed, but strangely inspired. The message from the Nuba people to their brothers and sisters across Sudan and across the border in South Sudan is that through stubborn resistance and strengthen their own capacity, they can not only hold on and resist evil, but ultimately earn a better destiny. <laughs>